I'm Anna America, uh, uh, Chief of Culture and Recreation for the City of Tulsa and Director of the Parks Culture and Recreation Department. I, uh, we're just so excited and delighted to have all of you here with us this morning. I've been in this job for a little over four years and uh, we've done some pretty cool fun stuff. What we're announcing today is I think one of the coolest, most fun and one of the things I'm most proud of that we've done so far. We, it's been very, very much a collaborative team effort and you're gonna hear today from some of the people who have made this possible. Uh, first up is going to be Mayor Bynum. Before he comes up, I want to I want to give him a, a park shout out, if you will. Now, you may find this hard to believe, but GT is probably not the most athletic uh, mayor we've ever had. He, I mean, he's he's fine. He's get out. He enjoys our parks, but you know, he didn't bike here this morning. He he's not that kind of parks user, but he understands, I think, as much as any mayor we've ever had how much this matters, how much these parks, green space, uh, cultural assets matter to the citizens of Tulsa. We've had almost 20 years of cuts and, um, you know, we've torn down centers. We have, have closed things. We have shut down park amenities. Since he's been mayor, we have two centers that when we came, uh, when we came into these roles, we thought were going to have to be torn down have been refurbished and reopened uh, in partnership with uh, uh, community partners. Two centers that have been closed by the end of this year, two centers that have been closed will be reopened fully as community centers serving serving Tulsans. And we have in every year, even in tough years, there's been a little bit more money that has come back into the parks budget because he understands we need good streets, we need a safe city, we need jobs, we need all of those things. But the things that make us wanna live in this city are the things that these quality of life assets and he's really prioritized uh, investing in those. And when we talk about that, making sure that every Tolson, every Tolson from, you know, that from the toddlers up to the seniors, that they see this as a city, not just where they can live, not just where they can work, but where all of them can come and play. And today is a testament to that and to tell you more about that and make our official announcement, Mayor G.T. Bynum. And I want to be clear that Anna is a civil service employee of the city of Tulsa, so her employment is protected no matter what she says about me. Uh, also, I love, I'm sitting here as a city history nerd trying to think about who was the most athletic mayor Tulsa ever had. It's clearly Mayor Savage. I think we could all agree on that. No, I, in high school, I used to say I was the most handsome guy on the debate team and kind of feel that way about trying to figure who was the most athletic mayor we ever had. Um, what a great day this is. Uh, I, I think in the time that I've been mayor, we have had some remarkable opportunities to announce historic park projects, but I can't think of one that I've been more excited about than this one, um, because I know uh, what it means for our community. And uh, I, I wanna, uh, one, I do wanna thank Mayor Savage for all of her work during the time that she was mayor to make sure that we had great parks. You know, we have over a hundred parks just in the city system in Tulsa. It requires a tremendous amount of management. Uh, uh, and I want to thank Councillor Fowler for being a strong champion of our park system on the council, making sure that our parks have the funding they need to do the job the right way. Councillor, thanks for being here. Um, and I want to thank the voters who every time we give them the opportunity to fund our park system in a way that they can be proud of, say yes. Uh, I cannot think of a time, definitely not the time I've been at City Hall for the last two decades, where voters have declined an opportunity to make our park system better. Uh, I think Tulsans understand the importance of parks in our community. Um, we're always thinking, though, about what kind of city we want to be. And, and I think, uh, especially as it relates to parks in Tulsa in the last decade, you've had a lot of reckoning around how we can utilize parks to create community at a time when, not just in Tulsa, but around the country and around the world, the things that we historically relied upon to create community uh, are, are waning. Um, it's never been easier to only get your news from somebody who's going to tell you what you want to hear. Um, 
civic association attendance is down, church associate church attendance is down. Uh, you can do all your shopping uh, from home and not run into people at the store or at Kiwanis or at church uh, who may have a different presidential candidate they're going to vote for, but you know that they're still a good person. All these things that we relied on as a country in the past to build community and to remind us of our shared humanity uh, are waning. And so we can either, as a community, say, well, I guess it was just going to be better in the past than it will be for the next generation of Tulsans, or we can do things right now that are new ways to build community. And in Tulsa, the way that the citizens of Tulsa have really honed in on doing that is around our park system. Having great parks is a way it creates experiences that bring people from all parts of our community, all walks of life, different nationalities, different religions, different political preferences, where you can just have a great experience together as Tulsans. And today we are announcing that here at Whiteside, we are going to build the best park in the state of Oklahoma for children of all abilities. Uh, and there, are, I, I'm really glad that the way that our communications team designed today's announcement, because you're gonna get to hear from the people who really made this happen. Um, I, I recall having a, an early meeting with uh, Lauren Poole, uh, or, or as most of us know her, Lincoln's mom, uh, who brought this idea up to me and told me about how great it would be to have something like this here in Tulsa. I, one, I, I couldn't believe that we did not already have this and that really across the state of Oklahoma, there is nothing like this in the state. Uh, I went back and talked with the best uh, parks leader in Oklahoma. I'm biased, uh, so I can return the favor <laughs> on America and, and brought this idea up to Anna. told her how, what a great idea I thought it was that Lauren had brought up with me. And Anna pointed out that we had funding that the voters had approved to overhaul our playground equipment here uh, at Whiteside Park. And that if we could just find a way to, cl to close the gap between the cost of uh, inclusive playground equipment and the cost of just basic playground equipment, the trash guys, it's kind of like they're you know, flying in formation. They don't have planes, so they just drive by to show their excitement. Uh, <laughs> but if we could just find a way to close that gap, we could make it happen. And, uh, and Anna had the great thought to approach the Bernstein Foundation. And you're going to hear from Irene here in a moment, uh, who made a gift that's going to make this possible for us to close that gap and build a playground, not just a playground, but overall facilities here at this park, uh, which all kids can enjoy on an equal basis. Um, and, and I think that's really important. This is not just playground equipment for kids with special needs. This is playground equipment that every kid in this region is going to be super excited to use and they're going to be using it side by side, having that great experience together as kids here in our community. So uh, I, I am so grateful for everyone that came together wanting Tulsa to be the kind of city where every kid has that opportunity and to build uh, facilities here at this park where every kid can have that kind of opportunity and we can build community even further in the 21st century. Um, I was out at the, uh, the Buddy Walk that the Down Syndrome Association of Tulsa hosts on Saturday and was talking with folks about this who were so excited. Uh, and I was out there supporting my nephew, Matthew Safransky, his mom, my sister Maggie is here today. Matt, we've had a team for Matthew every year uh, out there, and I've gotten to know so many of the families in the Down syndrome community here in Tulsa. And to see the excitement that they have for this facility, it reminded me of just Tulsa at its best. Uh, Tulsa at its best is a community of loving people who 
recognize what makes each of us unique and want to build the best city that we can for one another. And we're going to do that here at this park. So uh, I'm very grateful for everyone that's making this happen. I'm so excited to see this get underway. I want to thank all of you who are also excited and here to join us as we kick this off. And now I'll turn it back over to Anna. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And as he said, you know, he just told you some about how the vision for this this uh, playground originated. When you're in city government, those of you who, who work in city government and others are very familiar with this, a lot of times you have a vision that you can't make happen because you don't have the funding for it. So we had the vision, but what's making this happen today is the Bernstein Foundation, uh, which very, very generously, a million dollar donation to go toward this playground. The total cost will be around 1.2 million. So obviously the biggest chunk of this is coming from this foundation. I work with a lot of funders in Tulsa. This is our third uh, partnership uh, project that we've done in parks with the Bernstein Foundation. And I have to say, Irene Bernstein is absolutely one of my very favorites because she doesn't, I mean, she wants the details, she wants the data, she wants a plan. But then once she's on board, it's like, get her done. So <laughs> we're gonna, for, to, to come tell you a little bit about that, Ms. Get Her Done herself, Irene Bernstein. My family and I and our foundation celebrate the vision taking shape at Whiteside Park of an adaptive playground, a place children from across the community of all ages and abilities can gather together to play, explore, and learn from one another. We are grateful for the community members who added their voices and experiences to make this vision a reality. Come springtime, I'm looking forward to seeing the playground filled with children all learning and playing together. It will become a dream come true. Thank you so much. Uh, and some of you were probably like me, at least when this process started, and I, I was committed, I wanted us to have an inclusive playground. In my mind, that was something like, oh, that swing over there that somebody in a wheelchair user can use. Um, and I think this process has is, is really been an educational process for me to understand how every element in a playground uh, can be inclusive for every child. That's kids with mobility issues, sure but it's, there's all kinds of other things, children with developmental disabilities, children on the spectrum, children with visual or hearing uh, issues. And there are ways that you can design every playground piece that allows children to play at whatever their ability level is, that whatever their, their desire is so that they can engage together. It's not them over there on that piece for them. It's them like every other kid playing together with their friends and peers. Uh, to tell us a little bit about how that works, and we've got an example here you can see of a piece. Uh, Brian Montgomery, who is the project manager for us with the playground company that we're partnering with, ACS Playgrounds. They're part of a national um, uh, landscape structures. We'll be providing all of the equipment for this. And it's been a very collaborative process throughout. They've got a really wonderful national inclusive playground specialist who's really helped us work through all the pieces. But Brian's going to tell you a little bit about the specifics of the playground and I think tell us a little bit more specifically about like this piece and how that can incorporate children in play. Brian Montgomery. You know, one of the things I'm a I'm a playground nerd is what I call myself, and I can get really technical and talk about every detail for the next two hours, but none of, nobody wants that. So I can say that when Clint and his wife, Jill Pitzer, started this company back in 2005, they had one goal, one goal only, and that was to make kids smile and their families. And we, when we design playgrounds, we try to make sure that can happen. But when you start talking about inclusivity, how many kids can you get to smile with how many different abilities? And that's what this design does. Every single kid that can come and their mom and their dad, their caregivers, grandmas and grandpas will have something to do that helps them smile. And that is, that's the goal of this playground. And to talk a little bit about that, I have one sample here, and this is the Revy Will Spinner. And you can look at that and you can say, well, how is, how is that inclusive? Inclusivity has grown so much in playground design. It used to just be a ramp to one little slide. And that was kind of the way that, that inclusive playgrounds work. Well, now 
we design every piece with inclusivity in mind. So you have where this dips down here, it's, that is perfectly at wheelchair transfer height. So a child that has that ability that can transfer with help or on their own can transfer into the seat and they can spin and play with kids that have other abilities or their grandma and grandpa, if they choose to get in that, I can't get in it, but, or mom and dad, right? I mean, they have the opportunity to all play together and that's the goal. And as we started working with Anna and Gary and the Bernstein Foundation, they passionately, passionately said, we want every kid to be able to play. And so when you look at this design, you will see swings that are fully adaptive to where they have a harness that goes over a child if they need some upper upper body um, help. And there's a place you can go through the center of the design where there's a berm that gives the kids that are in the wheelchair that can't get out of a wheelchair. They can still get up there and have things to do, even if they can't transfer out. They can get elevation. They can get into the sway fun, which is the big boat looking swing that's in the design. They can stay in their wheelchair and they have the ability to swing back and forth and still get that swinging motion that they probably have never got to experience in their lives. So there are there's piece after piece, design piece after design piece, and uh, that is going to provide a lot of smiles in this community. And I can say we've been designing playgrounds now since 2005. Um, I can honestly say I've never been in meetings with more passionate people that are more pointed and a goal. And this, uh, this playground will do that. We'll do that. So I want to thank everybody. Thank you. So you, you, you know, we've got some people who, who might think we're important up here. You got a mayor, you got a parks director, you got foundations, you got all these people uh, with different power. There's probably nothing as powerful uh, as the person you're going to hear next. And that's a determined mom. I want to um, total chance yesterday in my memories on Facebook which I love, Facebook memories. This came up in my memories. And this was a post that Lauren did two years ago yesterday. And she tagged Mayor Bynum and she tagged me in it, which is why it showed up in my memories. And I'm just going to read you a little bit of what she said two years ago with her little girl, Lincoln. Another trip to the park and another stark reminder of how badly Tulsa needs an inclusive playground. Unfortunately, at most parks, the only thing Lincoln can participate in is swinging. And that's in a baby swing if handicapped swings are unavailable. Someday she'll outgrow the baby swing. She continues, it's so important for the disabled population of Tulsa to be included in every aspect of living. And one of the most crucial parts of being a child is play and peer-to-peer -peer interaction. I'm desperate for some sense of normalcy when we go to the park. I'm desperate to see Link be able to interact on a playground with her siblings and neurotypical peers. This is so important for a big population of people in our community. This is important for every community, but I'd like to start with ours. And she did. Lincoln Poole. Oh, Lauren, yeah. <laughs> I said Lincoln, who is a big part of the yes. reason here. It's Lauren. <laughs> no problem. Good morning, and thank you so much for being here. My name is Lauren, and my five-year-old daughter has cerebral palsy. I want to start by saying thank you to Mayor Bynum and Parks Director Anna America. When I approached Mayor Bynum in 2020 about the immense need for an inclusive park, he wasted no time putting me in contact with Anna, who put this need on her priority list. It means the world as a parent of a disabled child to be heard, respected, and included in every step of the planning process for this project. Thank you both for being city leaders who care about inclusion and making our community a community for all. I would also like to thank the Bernstein Foundation for their generous donation that made this playground possible. Your generosity is going to change countless lives and make an underserved population know that they matter. In addition to Lincoln, we have three sons who love going to the park. A few years ago, as my boys were playing at the park, I started thinking about all the things that Lincoln may not be able to do as she got older due to her mobility issues. Lincoln is a wheelchair user, and when she's not in her chair, she utilizes a walker. During our visits to parks, um, we would encounter many barriers that prevented us from playing. Mulch, plastic barriers that require the ability to step over, swings that aren't made for children who can't hold themselves up, and the list goes on. I also noticed there weren't many other individuals with disabilities at parks, and I had to ask myself why that is. 
The answer is simple, and it's because the vast majority of parks are not made for those with disabilities. This playground will be different though. Kids of all abilities were considered and discussed throughout the planning process. From visual impairments to sensory processing disorders and mobility limitations, this will be a park where everybody matters and is included. We've incorporated color-coordinated pathways to indicate what features are wheelchair accessible. The design also puts caregivers and parents in mind and creates the opportunity to easily play alongside kids who may need adult assistance. I've spent the last five years being very cognizant of the fact that the world was not made for individuals with disabilities, but by changing one thing at a time, we can make a big difference for those who may navigate the world differently. I hope that when this playground is open, all of you will come back to the biggest, most inclusive playground in Oklahoma and watch inclusion take place before your eyes. Thank you. This is, um, as we said, I think for all of us, it's it's such an exciting and proud day. What we're going to build here, and, and I wanted they wanted me to make sure the playground will actually be built on the other side of the center for anyone who. Uh, but this was that we wanted to have a more accessible site here for for today's announcement. This is going to be awesome. Probably something that will be just as impactful from this is what we have learned in the process. Like I said, we started this thinking if we added a few handicapped accessible swings at playgrounds, we were we could check that box and we were doing our job. And we've really learned through this process that everything that we do in parks, every trail we build, every tennis court, every everything that we can be thinking. Sometimes it's simple. It's color differences that help somebody with vision impairment uh, understand depth better. Um, we want as many Tolsons as possible to be able to play and, and enjoy as many things as possible in our parks. And because of Lauren and Irene and the mayor and the other people who brought this all together and all that we have learned, you're going to see, I, I hope, I, I'm committed to, and I think we all are, to really infusing this through everything that we do and the programming that we provide in parks. So the impact will be here, but it's going to be everywhere. So. Everybody, that's going to conclude our ceremony. Everybody here is available for additional questions and comments. You're welcome to come up. We want you to look at these pictures. I know that the media team has already distributed. If you did not get, there's a really wonderful fly-through um, dem video demonstration um, that can be shared that will show you through. Uh, it's like you're a child playing on this playground. It's really cool. Um, and I did want to, I want to uh, call out, I think, I know Rodrigo Rojas is here. I didn't see if we had any other park board members join us since I can't see well, but Rodrigo, in addition to serving in the mayor's office is a park board uh, member and also wanted to thank Sandy Busby here, who is part of our, our ongoing commitment to be more inclusive, who has been interpreting um, today's uh, comments. So thank you all so much for being here. <laughs>